Well, it's a beautiful day here. It's been very wet. Um, and although we've had a couple of frozen days, mostly for November, it's been frozen. Um, it's been wet and mild. Um, so these guys haven't had to come out that much because uh, it's just been too wet for them. Um, the garden is in a bit of a state. I am a strong believer of leaving it in this kind of natural state in the winter because it's better for wildlife. Um, but every time I walk past those bleeded irises, I'm desperate to have a clean up. Uh, but these guys are helping me clean up. As you can see, they're coming out and having a peck around. Um, these are the leftovers from our surprise chicks. So we've got four silkies and then a couple of Danvers. Here's a, a Danver boy. Obviously, I have culled most of the, the boys, but I really liked his coloration. He looks like his dad, Brewster. So I decided to keep him for now because he's a lovely little cockerel. Uh, we've got these hens, these pullets. Um, I think one of those is a boy and one of those is actually the girl. Uh, here's one of our little Danver girls. Here's Miracle, another Danver girl. You see another pullet in the background there. So I'm just letting them basically explore the garden today because it's it's dry, so they're coming off, coming out, and uh, having fun. Today I am finally taking these beautiful moss-leaved parsley plants out of the bed. Um, now parsley are actually perennial, um, so you don't need to see them sow them every year. Um, these were planted interspersed, interspersed between my outside. Um, tomatoes um, but I want to use this bed for something else and I also want to give them a little bit of protection during the winter because what I think we're get, is going to happen this year is that we're going to have a really mild December possibly a mild January and I think it's going to be like um, this current uh, winter spring season and that it will then get freezing February March time so I want to bring these in you can see that there are some lovely they've developed into lovely little plants that is a nice little parsley plant um, so I'm going to pop them up I'm going to pop them into the greenhouse where they can just sit over winter they'll continue growing I mean if you look in here this is all fresh new growth so I continue to harvest these um, and then next year I'll probably plant, plant them back out because let's be honest having things in the ground is far easier than having them in pots in terms of watering um, so I'll probably put them back out um, but then I can choose again where I want to intersperse them Well, today has been mostly about setting up a little Amazon influencer store. So it is literally just a place where I've kind of lift, listed a few of my favourite products so that you can see um, what I buy and what I think are good products. Um, so if you are shopping at any time and you're needing some inspiration, you can pop across to here. Um, it is uh, amazon.co.uk forward slash shop forward slash Brimwood Farm. Um, and as I say, I've created some lists. I've got some perfect houseplant gifts, eco-friendly gifts. So there's some bamboo toothbrushes here, some seed balls, hedgehog house. This is really cool. It's a hedgehog house with a camera inside it, which is really cool. Some just kind of ideas for my personal taste in interior design, poultry products, anti-plastic products, gardening, uh, inspirational books. Some of those will include those books I listed in Lid Zorab's uh, book library challenge. Um, again, as with Amazon Associates, if you do buy anything from here or order anything from here, I get a small cut. So that always helps fund the channel and the farm. Um, but feel free to pop across and take a look. As I say, it's uh, amazon.co.uk forward slash shop forward slash Brimwood Farm. I'll put the link in the description so you can take a look um, and yeah it's just kind of a collection of my personal style and favorites which is always nice to kind of share with people I thought we would revisit the Christmas cacti so the, here they are in situ in the bathroom so we've got the the pink one uh, that is the one that I've had for a couple of years now and you can see it's still in full flower um, it's looking really, really nice. Although you can see they are starting to go over down here. But now if we move to the new one, which is up here, this is what I mean by when you buy new Christmas cacti, they don't last very long. So this bud hasn't even flowered, but it's just wilted. See, it just falls off. And that's what happens 
uh, to Christmas cacti when they move. So they look fabulous in the shops, but after just a couple of weeks, these have gone the same. Uh, that started to look like I shouldn't be able to do that to the flower bud. And uh, they all go over, so they all do drop off. This was obviously the plant that I used to pollinate. Uh, no, I've used all the flowers that are open to pollinate. Now, none of these buds will open. So I've pollinated as many of these flowers as I can. It'll be a while before we know whether they are starting to seed. But I think this was one of the first flowers that I seeded, or I pollinated rather. And you can see here, there is a little bit of a pod forming. So if you look at other flowers, you can see it's quite thin. This one seems to be a little bit swollen to me, so I'm hoping that there may be some seeds in there. So I'll keep you updated on the progress of these seed pods, and then it'll be really cool actually over the next year or so if we can collect these seeds, uh, germinate them, grow them on, and then we can see what this cross of this uh, Christmas cacti and this Christmas cacti, what, if any, new colours they produce. Well I am about to do a clean out of my mealworm container so I thought actually I'd quickly show you what's going on. You can see there's a lot of dead stuff along here and that's why I need to clean it out. Um, I need to basically get rid of all of these skins. So all of this stuff, this is old skin from mealworms that have shed their skin and, and grown up. Uh, there's quite a lot of dead beetles here as well, so they've gone through their life cycle already. Now, if you're literally just growing mealworms to feed to your pets and your your chickens and things like that, then you don't need to worry too much about the state of this because you can feed the dead bugs to them. Um, and you can obviously just pick mealworms out as, as and when. But because we want to actually eat these ourselves, these are going to be for some human consumption, um, I want to obviously make it nice and clean and uh, hygienic, as hygienic as possible. Um, it's nice to see though that I did leave this colony for a long time and it almost died out, um, but we've now got lots of stages. So we've got big mealworms like this guy here. He's growing on really well. We've got these, so these are the pupae. So these are big mealworms that are pupating into uh, new beetles. We've obviously got the beetles. Um, these browner beetles are freshly hatched beetles and then they turn a darker colour later on. And then if we lift this banana over up here I think is where is he gone? There it is. There is a tiny, tiny little mealworm. So that shows that we've got kind of eggs, new hatches, and the cycle is continuing. Um, so I'm going to clean this out. I'm going to sift all of this dead stuff out, put them into a new container. I'm not going to throw out all this um, material because it could have eggs in it. So I'm literally going to have to sift out all the dead bugs and the, the skins and the casts. Um, but I'm going to start a new container with the beetles and then I'm going to leave the mealworms themselves in here. And um, so they'll continue growing and turning in and then I'm going to have a new system where I literally move beetles from one container to the other. So that is a little update on the working mealworm plan. I just got home from work and look! Well, that little pink thing that you just saw get rolled away the first of Sonny's 2008 babies. So there's dad. You can see actually in that corner is the shell. It's, it's come out quite recently because the uh, the shell's still got quite a bit of reddish veining in it. Dad is mega interested in the baby, which is good because he will be feeding it. Um, so she has hatched number one out of five eggs, um, and she may not have started. She may have started incubating on the first or the second day. So we may actually have another chick hatch out today. Um, the first two or three often hatch together because remember budgies hatch. Well, budgies lay their eggs every other day, so they tend not to start incubating until the second or the third egg. So the first few chicks hatch out together. Um, and that gives them a better chance of survival. 
um, because if you think she's got five eggs, if they all hatched out from day one, by the time the last egg hatched, the oldest chick would be 10 days old and be way too big. There's dad, doesn't really know what it is. So I am going to shut this nest box up, leave them in the dark, keep an eye on what's going on. Actually, dad's being very attentive there. Feeding mum so that she can feed the chick straight off. Super cute. Okay. Well, I've just popped to the shops. Uh, Sard is not very well today at all. He's really ill, in fact. Um, horrendous cough. So popped out, and I found this little guy on the pavement. Now, I always pick them up because I worry that somebody will accidentally stand on him. And, I, and actually, sadly, in this society, somebody might see him or her and purposely stand on him. So I've picked him up and brought him home. Um, he is actually alive. He's like a woolly bear caterpillar or something along those lines. Um, brought him home and I'm going to leave him in the conservatory where it's a little bit warmer. Now it is December, so it's unusual to see caterpillars around at this time of year. What he'll probably do is he was probably sort of woke up in some milder weather and was marching off somewhere to make a cocoon. Um, he is kind of that you can see here is kind of quite fat and looking as if he's ready to make a cocoon. So I'm going to put him on some soil, and uh, probably over the next couple of hours, days, he'll bury himself and make a little cocoon, and then next year, obviously pupate into a moth but yeah a nice little find for the end of the week um it's cool that even in december you can find these little guys walking across pavements and uh yeah i'm glad that i rescued this little critter and i will put him to rest in the conservatory so he can survive to live and hopefully pupate another day